We are live. We're live. Welcome to a new episode of the Electric Podcast, a special episode this week because uh, we're going to discuss what to expect for the Tesla Cybertruck pickup truck unveiling uh, later this month. It just got an official unveiling date, November 21st, and hopefully my co-host, Samuel Trout, as usual, uh, is, up go is going to be there. So we're going to discuss what to expect and what, kind what guys you want to know about the, uh, the pickup truck. And uh, just for a general impression uh, ahead of the unveiling. Yeah, so I'm going to be in Los Angeles anyway because of the uh, LA Auto Show. The the press week is the week before that, uh, mm -hmm. which kind of segues into my uh, like first initial thoughts on on the announcement date. It like Tesla doesn't do this stuff, and and you you de definitely mentioned this in the in the post. Tesla does not do uh, bringing their 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 uh, prototypes and things that they're not selling to the LA auto show. They've only ever had things that was for sale, but mm -hmm. the, the date of this is like the night before I'm assuming it's going to be at night, the night before um, the public viewing at the LA auto show where Tesla is also going to be giving test drives of their current vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they're going to test drive the, the, the cyber truck, but yeah, maybe anyway, um, this would be like a monumental, like everybody at the LA Auto Show and and probably a hundred times that many people who weren't planning to go to the LA Auto Show would want to go see the the Cybertruck in person. In my opinion, I think it would be like it would be like a riot gear kind of uh, situation. Um, that's my opinion. Maybe some people don't care, but um, so it seems like that would be a, a great opportunity for Tesla to to get a whole lot more people behind the wheel of their current vehicles because they want to come see the pickup. Hey, you want to come see the pickup? Do you want to sign up for a uh, test drive? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. All right. I, I doubt it personally because it's just it's not something that Tesla is usually done. They show their prototype and then they keep it close to their chest for a long time. Uh, it it does uh, go to some public oh, things in every, in every now and again. But, uh, for example, we look at the Model Y. Uh, it was on Villa March. Since then, we've seen it at public Tesla events maybe twice, three times max. Um, I don't think it has ever been at a auto show just yet. So I, I doubt it. But I get where you're coming from because it makes a ton of sense, uh, especially if Tesla is doing test drives uh, for their other cars there. So it will certainly not do test drives for their, their pickup. Uh, they, they didn't even do test drives for the Model Y, the unveiling, so they won't do that for the pickup, uh, which is most likely further away from production than Model Y was at the time of um, its unveiling. But if, like you said, it would probably bring a ton of people at the at the show, would be bring a ton of people at Tesla's boot at the show, and then for sure the Tesla staff at the show would be trained to do a whole. Uh, uh, switcheroo where oh yeah you came to see the pickup truck yeah it's a great concept it's a concept though it's two or three years away uh you can get into a model three a model s or a model x though right now we can get you at the back of the show whoop, <laughs> the parking the parking lot we can get you behind the wheel and then you can order right away and get a car in a few weeks so uh, i'm sure there would be a lot of that going but I i'm still not convinced that it's going to be there for for the reason i just mentioned it's only 30 minutes uh away from the, the <laughs> unveil they could theoretically just throw it on the back of a truck. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, like it just seems like too good an opportunity and too good of timing not to come to some sort of fruition. Um, I don't know. Let us know what you think in the comments about that. Cause I'm curious, but like the it, timing. So, so that, that would mean that the timing of the truck the unveiling was because of the, of the show, which uh, I mean, it would make sense because uh, for people who don't know this, uh, in the auto industry, most automakers uh, would will pay for uh, auto journalists to come to their own wheeling, their vehicles on wheeling. So they'll pay for the travels, they they pay the the plane tickets, they pay for uh, hotel stays, and then they treat you well there with that dinners and whatnot. So that that's how the automotive industry works for the most part, except for you guessed it, Tesla, who, who just have enough. 
they feel like they have enough attention on them that if they unveil something, journalists will want to be there and they will pay their own travel to come and sit there. And so far, so good. It, it worked. <laughs> it's been working for Tesla. I mean, uh, ourselves, we, we uh, have uh, racked up um, thousands of dollars in travel costs over the last few years to, to go uh, to those events. So, I mean, I, I come from Apple and Google, and I think Tesla is more of a tech company like Apple and mm -hmm. Google, where they expect you to pay your your to come to events and maybe, you know, and Apple and Google aren't broke by any stretch. So nope. like the fact that they are so looked upon by the press, like there's you have to be there mm -hmm. for the event or it seems like you have to be. Um, I feel like Tesla is more like an Apple or Google than a Ford or Chevy. Um, so I think they're kind of taking after uh, those tech companies. And frankly, they don't need, I mean, if, if something were wrong, uh, they would probably theoretically think about helping cover costs, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like Tesla's have any attention problems. But no. on the flip side, um, I do talk to a lot of auto journalists that are like, screw Tesla. They don't help us out at all for any of our <laughs> whatever. And, yeah. you know, that's that's just because they're spoiled like crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm coming from Apple and Google world where I'm like, oh, you're going to fly me to Europe and uh, you're going to pay for my four star hotel and let us play with a new car for a couple mm -hmm. days. That sounds crazy. <laughs> but like all these other guys are like, yeah, yeah. it's the other way around for them, for the other hotel journalists. It's like it's crazy for them not to pay. Like, well, what world do you right. live in? Man? Right, and, the and those guys complain like, oh, this hotel is only four stars. <laughs> like, come I'll on, be paid for five stars the last time. You're like, right. okay, um, but yeah. So my point with that was, uh, I'm not sure that that was really the main part of the timing for the release of the pickup truck. Uh, I think. First off, the, the main part of the, the timing for Tesla's release or generally is the concept ready or not. Like they just they release it when it's, with the only, when it's finally ready. And then we know how Tesla is with timelines sometimes. So it might just be a pure coincidence that it's happening around the time of the show too. But there was also the Blaine Runner thing rumors has been going on for a while since Elon mentioned. He didn't mention that it was necessarily inspired by a Blade Runner, the concept. But he said that it was Blaine Runner-esque, look like something out of Blaine Runner. Whether that's a coincidence where they just end up looking like that, or they were actually inspired by the movie, it could be one or the other. But if you look at the um, events of Blade Runner, of the original movie with uh, Harrison Ford, and um, who did that movie? And uh, I forget the director, but famous director Ridley, Ridley Scott. Uh, Ridley Scott. Uh, the events of the movies happen in November 2019 in Los Angeles. So. Uh, some people think that uh, that's why the unveiling is taking place now, but it could also be that pure coincidence with the pure coincidence because the concept is ready could be influenced by that, or it could be also like uh, Tesla is just being efficient with uh, knowing that the uh, Elliot show is happening at the same time, and um, all the journalists is in town. But I don't I'm somehow feeling. I mean, it, that. it seems it seems like a lot of things kind of coming together. Uh, Elon did tweet something about the uh, Blade Runner thing today as well so the well he did see the cyberpunk thing no no he like the, huh? the date he, he he tweeted something about the date oh, um, okay, november so it's not lost on them that the november thing mm -hmm. it's not a cool i mean may, maybe it was just like it fits like november's the auto show and it's also blade runner let's do that because originally right. it was supposed to be at the end of summer wasn't it or the fall yeah, end of summer. So it, it is a bit late to that. So which brings me to the whole uh, when it's ready and whatnot. Let's go through a few questions maybe uh, so that um, get out of the way and then we can build on on, on the question for um, Prashant Buyala. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, when do you anticipate deliveries will start for the Cybertrucks? So that, that's the, the huge question. And if you look at Tesla's history of uh, unveiling a car, unveiling a vehicle concept, and bringing to production, it's been shortened a lot over the years uh, since the Model 3. And now it looks very good too with Model Y, which could be uh, a year to 16, like 12 to 18 months, let's say, uh, from the unveiling that the car is going to go into production. And it's similarly with Model 3, uh, though, of course, we know that the, the, there's a big difference between time to production. So production start and time for volume production, uh, two very different things. Uh, so 
there's been no uh, indication whatsoever when that's going to happen. My own guess would be uh, Tesla will try to get that to market as soon as possible because of the timing of other vehicles coming to market, like the Rivian 2021. Um, Ford F-150 electric should be not too far behind 2021, but probably 2022 based on Ford's timing. And um, GM, GM, it's a little bit uh, more difficult to, they, they haven't even confirmed anything yet. There's just all talk about the uh, sort of the negotiation for the strike. Oh, we'll, we'll bring that to production there if you guys sign that. So uh, it's a, a lot more uh, difficult to, to predict. But yeah, personally, I think they will try 2021 because uh, uh, officially there's nothing planned after start the production. So they start production Model Y 2020, uh, end of 2020 to SMI. Roadster is Roadster is such a smaller program. I don't know if it's that uh, big of an impact, but um, yeah, 2021 makes sense for me. What do you think, Seth? Uh, 21 probably planned, and 22 probably realistic numbers. Um, just just by uh, past indications, I think he's got a good follow up question. And like, where do you think uh, it'll be produced? Um, you know, if this is a big uh, program which i think it should be um i don't know if there's any more room in uh fremont for something like this yeah fremont i think is a definitely a no-go for, for for the pickup truck especially since it's going to be a huge program uh production program in terms of, of volume well if it well if it's a success because if we come back to the design and now what elon i've been saying in terms of uh, maybe not everyone's going to want that the, the, the truck and they even went as far as saying if uh it's not wildly uh like in terms of the design we're gonna just uh, quickly turn it around and do use the power train that, that we designed and put a more traditional truck design on top of it which is surprising to say ahead of a home dealing like that so let's say that it, it is successful I'm, I'm sure tesla is planning for a six figure per year um production volumes they could they could be uh could be gigafactory expansion thing uh but even then at that point tesla has already a huge plan for gigafactory production of battery packs battery modules on top of passing battery cell production then you have uh the tesla semi that's been uh rumored to be produced there though if they do share some parts with the tesla semi which also has been a rumor then it could make sense to produce both the tesla semi and the pickup truck at the same location, uh, although those are, are, are still rumors. So um, yeah, a, a bunch of interesting options there. Yeah, I mean, I, I the only thing I can kind of guarantee, well, not, I can't guarantee anything, but it seems like this will be a US market kind of vehicle. So it sounds like something that would be made in the US. Like you're not gonna make something in China that, well, it seems unlikely that they'll, they'll build something like this in China um at least out of the gate but mm -hmm. overall the markets in the u.s and canada probably mostly yes i mean that that's where that's where the demand is so that that's where the production would be but there's been rumors of other uh, tesla building and other um factories in north america too so they could be produced there um if tesla pulls the trigger on that but um yeah i'm referring to model y for a while tesla was thinking model y production at fremont or, or Giga Factory, and they were also considering maybe um, a, a, a second Californian factory, uh, though that, that didn't, didn't happen. Of course, that's a big capital investment too, and Tesla is trying to be more efficient with its capital in order to um, stay profitable like they did last quarter, which was a big surprise, but it's a big surprise. But every time Tesla has come up with a profitable quarter, it's been a one-off and then uh, back to severe losses. So. They, probably, they need to work on maintaining that going forward. And if you go ahead and um, you, you go ahead and make it like a brand new factory or even a, a massive new production line like the pickup truck's gonna uh, require, that's gonna take a lot of capital. And I'm not sure that Tesla wants to go back to the public market for that. Uh, though I'm sure that they could um, maybe just with uh, reservation if they if they can secure a large number of reservation and then. Uh, raise capital based on that. That could be an interesting move. They did that before. They did that with the Model 3, of course. Uh, there was a, a capital 
raise around the time of the Model Y on Vling, um, but uh, Tesla didn't uh, do that building on the numbers of Model Y on Vling uh, Model Y reservation because we they never disclosed those. Though you can still figure out that it was much lower than Model Three based on the customer deposit line in Tesla's uh, financial results. Um, I think it could be much bigger with a pickup truck, especially if it looks different. I yeah. think it could be um, we again a six, six figure six figure reservation. What do you think? So I'm skipping ahead. Yeah, I think it could be huge. So I'm skipping ahead because this is kind of a transition. But um, missing piece wants to know: Are you going to keep your Rivian reservation if Cybertruck blows it out of the water? I mean, of course not. If it blows it <laughs> out of the water, I, I won't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna just go with Rivian for like um, to just to encourage them. I mean, it's gonna be like a a pretty big purchase if I go through with it. So I'm gonna go with what's best on the market. Um, problem with Rivian right now, I do like the product a lot, but they they only have announced like the base price of of the truck, and I'm looking at the mid range or long range version that's interesting to me for for the R1T Rivian, and I'm I'm still. Uh, I'm curious to see what's going to be the price of that. It, it might be, it might be like a hundred thousand dollar vehicle, which uh, I'm not sure I'm, I'd be I'd be ready to go. Um, especially I have two I have two Teslas now, and I, I don't drive any of them because I'm always traveling anyway. So I uh, I need to stop buying electric vehicles, and I I never drive. <laughs> well, you could trade one in. Uh, yeah, I could do that, but I cannot part ways with my Model S signature. I yeah, have, like, yeah, but your parents are driving that, right? Yeah, at least my parents are driving. And uh, to to be fair, I don't. I, I say I'm not driving that, but they, they they are being driven around. My goal is to at least have contribute to fewer gas mileage, and uh, if I can give my cars to people that uh, are not going to drive drive their gasoline cars, that's a win for me. So that's what I'm doing right now. But still, so let's talk about some uh, possible features. Like the Rivian's got a bunch of cool stuff that we like that pass oh, yeah. thing. Um, SAI thinks he's pretty sure it's going to fly. I don't know that, that, about that. I think that's based on Elon just tweeting that uh, the, the thing about the Roadster SpaceX package and it could do the similar thing with the uh, with the pickup truck. I think that's pushing it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, a lot. Although like, that would be good for clearing snow. So you mean literally like pushing the snow away with the with the rocket thrusters with the cold air thrusters? Yeah, I tried yeah. doing that with the drone once. It didn't work. But <laughs> if, you, if you've got rocket thrusters. You could clear some snow. Yeah, and uh, no, I don't think it makes sense to have the SpaceX package on 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 the truck because it, it's a performance package that wouldn't be as useful on, on a pickup truck. Uh, but but you never know with with Tesla and, and Elon. So, um, so what else do you think they're going to show? Uh, missing like, piece: that new Powerwall capable of, of charging the cyber truck. I mean, any Powerwall can charge anything, but. Well, maybe maybe yeah, direct. Yeah, no, but yeah, I think he's he referring to a, like a charger power wall combination, which is something that they did talk about. Uh, was it for the Tesla semi unveiling that it was supposed to be a new power wall coming out? Uh, uh, now I'm getting confused, but there was one event in the next the last two years where Tesla was like, "We're gonna unveil a new power wall charger thing, a new um, charger um, product." And then they didn't unveil it. So I don't know what happened with that. We did ask Elon about that, and he, he, he never said. So I don't I don't, I don't think there's going to be something about that in this one. However, since the Tesla semi unveiling and the Roadster coming out, people are oh, there's going to be like a one more thing at the uh, at Tesla event. But there that was the only time there was a one more thing at, at a Tesla event ever. <laughs> so uh, it's not it's not the rule. It was the exception that the Roadster. Uh, though you could argue that Tesla did like show that picture of the Tesla pickup at the end of the Model Y unveiling, so it of. wasn't like a, yeah, they did. No one saw it, and even if everyone would would have seen it, it's just a teaser image. It's not, it's nothing like bringing out the Roadster at Tesla semi. That was the perfect unveiling that you could have done. That yeah, really that was awesome. away. Um, uh, they, they also did show the Shanghai Gigafactory for the first time at the Model Y event, but that's you know, you know not super. Yeah, amazing. also also not. That big of a, a thing to unveil now. But if they unveil something else, uh, 
I really don't know what it could be at this point. I mean, I think there's a lot of opportunity with the, the electrification. So, um, you know, if they have a built-in inverter that can kind of power a house or power a bunch of power tools, um, that's something cool. Uh, you know, I think a lot of trucks right now come with uh, a kind of a low powered uh, inverter that powers some power tools, but this would obviously be able to power quite a few more. Um, I don't, there's a bunch of cool stuff. Like maybe it's got a surfboard holder or maybe it's got um, something we're not even thinking about. I'm sure Tesla will have something like that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with modelers, um, modeler adaptation to the bed. Rivian has, has done a lot of interesting thing on that front. A missing piece of maybe a Roadster uh, demonstration of the SpaceX package on the Roadster. I did ask Elon about that earlier this year, and he said that he expected a demonstration of that at the end of next year. So I would be very surprised if, if that's ready. Uh, I think that's very conceptual right now. But yeah, uh, Rivian, not at their own wheeling, which by the way, Rivian's own wheeling was the LA Auto Show last year. So a year later, you see the, the Tesla Semi. So it was a big year uh, last year, uh, the LA Auto Show for a pickup truck. Because I would argue that Rivian actually launched the electric pickup truck craze, really. Because before that, Tesla was talking about a pickup truck, but there wasn't that much uh, hype behind it. Well, uh, there's always hype behind Tesla products. I'm not saying that, but it, it wasn't as big as it was uh, uh, has been in the last few months. So I think Rivian really launched that, and after the, after that, you saw Ford announce it. You saw GM talking about it, and now you have um, Tesla officially on the lenders. Uh, hope it has unbreakable windshields of the semi. Yeah, I think we could see a lot of uh, similarity between the Tesla semi and the. Um, Cyber truck. Are, are we calling it a cyber truck, by the way, now? Is that, I don't know. Cyberpunk, cyber truck, cyber yeah. frunk, cyber, yeah. I don't know, whatever. The last few times that Elon mentioned it, he did say cyber truck, the Tesla cyber maybe truck. Maybe that's the model. So, maybe that's the name. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, maybe unbreakable windshield would be one of, one of those things as possible. Although the unbreakable windshield, uh, that has a specific use for a commercial vehicle like, like the Tesla Semi because... Um, they, they often break the windshield. I mean, things happen. They do Tesla, not Tesla semi, but semi trucks in general drives a lot, and things happen, and they hit the windshield. And when they do, they have to stop the truck, and uh, you take off hours of to, to replace the windshield or, or repair the cracks, and that's that's cost them thousands of dollars in in cost uh, to uh, when when your truck is not working, your truck is not earning money. So having um, unbreakable windshield. Yeah, is worth is worth the money there? Is it worth the money for a consumer product? Maybe not. Uh, I'm not sure of the cost comparison here. Also, strangely, it can be a security issue because if you like have unbreakable glass surrounding your car and you're in like a wreck, uh, and the fireman can't break through that thing, uh, you're yeah. kind of screwed. Yeah. But anyway, that that might be that might be something we'd see. Um, you already covered the the volume per year. Um, six figures i think for sure yeah yeah it could be i mean if, if you look at the volumes that ford is taking out for the f-150 and then gmc is a bunch of them then you have chrysler with the dodge if there's, there's tons yeah so um originally i feel like the cyber truck or what we're now calling the cyber truck was going to be sort of based on the model three uh I mean, a Tesla Perfect. Semi has all three motors, so right. it's not impossible. Uh, Tesla has the played powertrain coming out on the Model S. Right. It has three motors. Uh, we, it hasn't been confirmed that they have been model three motors, but that's the speculation. Um, though Tesla, so so, it, it might, it's very likely, in my opinion, that's going to be three. Um, Tesla optimizing the package that they've been working for the um the, the semi which has more than three though the semi i think that's at least four right right four at least four or well, six or more. maybe even six so maybe they find a way to package them by three and uh do it um they could they could put an entire drivetrain three three electric motor drivetrain with a uh, number of power packs mo mo battery modules that they can package together and do the the pickup truck which leads me to another interesting thing like especially since the design has been a big question for, for the, um, the cyber truck. Uh, Tesla is, regardless of the design, 
is building a brand new platform for this. I mean, I don't I don't think this is being built on the Model X platform. Don't think it's certainly not being built on the Model 3 or Model Y platform. And uh, maybe it tests a semi platform. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't seems bet on that. Yeah, yeah, it seems a bit just a tiny bit too big. So I, I do believe Tesla has built a new brand new platform for the Tesla pickup truck. And now that's that could be a very prime platform to release different kinds of vehicles on it. So that, that could be interesting. Um, if there's one more thing on, uh, at this event, I would think that it's um, so, sort of some sort of commercial vehicle built, built on that platform. Maybe um, some kind of boring company, people mover built on a bigger, larger platform that can have like 16 people in it or something, which was the original plan. Uh, when I talked to uh, the president of the Boring Company uh, earlier this year and they announced the Las Vegas project, um, that was a big question. What are they going to do with Las Vegas project? Is it going to really be the the thing with the Mall X that we saw last year uh, at the Boring Company event that, that turned a lot of people away from the Boring Company? That's basically just a regular tunnels with Mall X inside. And um, he said that's going to be an option, but we're still looking at the pedestrian vehicle that uh, we unveiled in that very f cool video that they had when they launched the Boring Company. So maybe something like that, that could be cool too. Oh, yeah. And we haven't talked about the minibus in a while. Like uh, Elon did promise a minibus. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's on the same platform. I mean, if you have the sloping front end, eh, I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, that might be a good plus one. Uh, so somebody, Meyer T asked, do you believe the sci-fi design could potentially limit sales appeal? And I, I believe that's a pretty good question. If so, why would Tesla go with such a design? Yeah. Um, but I we think, don't know until we see it. I mean, right. Uh, sometimes you see those design those concept and you, they, they're a little bit too funky, but you never know. Like just, I posted the Kia one today, like the, this SUV, which is all of this world and it looks super cool. But you know it's not going to be something that going to go to production. I mean, it has giant oversized wheel, and the proportion for the windows are super small. That you have like no, uh, you don't have a good side from 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 the driver's seat. So there, there's compromise to be made. But I'm sure Tesla's design team can pull it off, and it, it can be something cool. Even though it, it, all of this world, I mean, Elon said yesterday that people will think it's something out of a movie set. Um, I know plenty of people that want to buy a Batmobile, like right. of what you said. So, if if they can turn that into uh, commercial products that are a decent price, you never know. Like I, I don't think many people tried it. I mean, there's uh, the kind of um, the DeLorean days that didn't work out. Like they, they tried to do it, didn't work out. Um, maybe it's going to be a similar situation. Maybe they'll get it right. Um, yeah, DeLorean kind of strikes me as kind of cyberpunky. Yeah. Um, especially with all the uh, Back to the Future stuff on it. Um, so, uh, uh, Missing Piece also is hoping for four motors and tank mode for zero turn. That was one thing about the Rivian truck that I know I was excited about the zero turn possibility. Is that something that, I mean, Tesla could clearly, four, four motors is in Tesla's wheelhouse. Um, is that something you think they would work on? Yeah, uh, do you need four more? Uh, yeah, you probably do because you need traction at each wheel to do that. But you could, um, yeah, that you could, you wouldn't need four motors. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, a tank mode thing is cool, though. It's like how many, oh, how, how yeah, much exactly. you can get all of that. Even, even Rivian has been honest about it and like, yeah, it's, it's cool, it looks super cool, but we won't allow you to do that on asphalt. So um, it has right. to do on other surfaces, so it's it's really for off roading and, and things like that, which some people do, but it's not that big of a market. Uh, however, it does look crazy cool. So, and I, I've talked to RJ um, maybe a few months ago, uh, that the CEO of Rivian, and he did say that he was going to finally finally release that video that we've been talking about, that uh, uh, an actual demonstration of that, their tank that video mode. alone is going to be like a new yeah. cycle. Yeah, and I feel like they should do that around the time that Tesla unveils oh. it, uh, unveils it, so that to keep some of that uh, momentum going of her of their of their truck. Uh, and then uh, it's not like they needed that much. I'm not saying that Rivian is going to be in any troubles from uh, Tesla's unveiling of the Cybertruck. I, it's gonna it's, it's gonna hurt them maybe a little bit at first, but you know the they, the market for pickup truck is so big, and all you need to do right now is just convince pickup truck buyers that they can go electric 
And uh, so, so if Tesla can help people convince them to do that, and some people uh, end up looking into electric talks and maybe they prefer the Rivian or whatnot, then that, that's going to help for sure. So even though there's some competition, I don't. I think it, it's a plus for the whole um, industry that more electric pickup trucks are being unveiled and people can see that they can they can go electric with a pickup, which has been a problem with any electric vehicles. A lot of people think that it's it's not good for them. It, it won't work. It's not enough range. Charging is too slow, and arguably, that's a bigger challenge for electric for pickup truck because they're less aerodynamic, so less efficient to start with. Um, although at the same time, what it does, it's a bigger room for improvement. And that's what Tesla has been good at. I mean, they are the efficiency king, not just uh, electric versus gasoline, but in the electric vehicle in general, they are extremely good at making efficient EVs. And I mean, you can compare them all X to the Audi e-tron or the QC, um, uh, Mercedes-Benz QC. So I'm, I'm sure that they're gonna do a great job with um, the truck. What about big and, tires? Do you think uh, they'll be able to put huge tires on it? That's that that's the, been a, a big question. Like you have to find this um, compromise between the stickiness and the width of the tires and the. I mean, now at thirty five, he's talking about the monster diameter. Tire. Yeah, yeah, it's a monster tire. I'm sure that they're gonna uh, make a wheel well that's gonna support the bigger size tire and then they're gonna have a smaller size option um to to, to as a standard and but uh if they have some kind of cyberpunk thing i mean i'm sure they're gonna have some off-road capability and they're gonna they're gonna enable larger tires the uh, the biggest question to me is what kind of bed they're gonna have what, what kind of size bed they're gonna have they're gonna have a six inch bed a six feet bed um that's the that was the biggest complaint that i've heard about the rivian truck where it's not a full size bed. You cannot put uh, an ATV behind it. You cannot put uh, even a full size bike. Right. Yeah. Uh, good question. Do you, um, do you think uh, so? Like, well, we kind of also already. Yeah, we, we touched that. We touched that a little bit earlier. Maybe a boring company position movers. Uh, a, a commercial van would wouldn't make sense to maybe, maybe even more like a commercial commercial delivery vehicle more than a sprinter van. Because uh, I mean, they don't do it. Ford doesn't do it for the F one fifty, but the F two fifty they use the same platform to make those kind of. Um, big box uh, delivery vehicles. Right, so, and w with uh, Amazon buying so many uh, Rivian vans, the uh, competitors like who are now UPS, FedEx, DHL, the US post office, they could all be electric, potential yeah. customers there. Um, you know, Tesla wouldn't need to make uh, all wheel drive for those, but you know, that's a big customer base right there. Uh, how much do you think it will weigh? I'm gonna say a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be an EV. That, that's the other thing that Tesla like. They have to be efficient. But um, the interesting thing is that with the Tesla Semi, they claim to have managed the weight very well. And uh, uh, now I don't have the numbers in mind, but uh, I feel like something like fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand pounds have been uh, thrown around, and uh, th that's not bad. And so it's not, that's not bad when you consider that rumored one megawatt hour of battery capacity in it or something like that so right. that, that would be crazy uh so this this is kind of back to the um where is it going to be built uh we can probably move on from that and then uh we saw the uh semi in a uh pickup truck format i wonder how much that's going to look like the uh cyber truck um but that was carrying a ford f-150 yeah uh, so fun. they could do something like that but i mean i, I don't think it's gonna fit in you know, f-150 was gonna fit in the bed of the cyber truck like it did with that pickup um semi semi tesla semi pickup version uh but they could certainly do something like uh, a, a tug of war with with the with the cyber truck and an, an f-150 uh just just something like that like you you take a raptor right uh, f-150 raptor against the cyber truck because uh, th th that, that's probably the biggest thing they're gonna go after is a Raptor because it's also like the cool, cool looking right. 
pick up that sort of off-road capability and things like that. So that's probably a truck you want to go with. It's probably the, the, the price range. I cannot, I don't remember the exact price range of the Raptor, but it is a little bit more expensive than the, the, the average pickup truck. And uh, surprisingly, it's the one that holds value the best. It's like one of the best vehicle tools value at the uh, Ford Raptor. Yeah, I and think that's, that's why like, Ford yeah, is finally going into the, the electrics now. It's like, all right, they're 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 attacking our bread and butter yeah. with the uh, the pickups. Like everything else was like, yeah, we'll just kill all of our consumer cars rather than build electric. But yeah. if they come after our trucks, all right, now we gotta now we gotta get in the game. Uh, let's go some more questions. Um, trailer hauling, obviously, it's gonna be able to uh, haul stuff. Yeah, Do you think it's gonna be able to haul like monster boats. Is this gonna be a big area? I mean, I, I mean, Elon has been already talking about three hundred thousand pounds of capacity. Of course, I don't think that's gonna be the rated capacity that's gonna be on your warranty. But uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. It would be actual actually capable of, of towing that over a relatively small distance safely but uh it's gonna have uh, like the highest rating towing capability they can have i think for for a pickup i think they're gonna, they're gonna go for that yeah. however if you do that it's gonna affect the range greatly and um which brings me to to, to one of the biggest question of the night it's gonna be what are gonna be the variants of the cyber truck in terms of battery pack options and then how does those affect the price? Because Elon went out and said uh, um, it's going to cost less than fifty thousand dollars and being be and be better than an F one fifty. I mean that's a crazy statement to make and very encouraging statement. But uh, I think it's going to start at fifty thousand to be, and it's going to be like the Model Three at thirty. Yeah, but 000. then how, how big of a battery pack you going to have at that fifty thousand? Right. I don't know. It's going to be. You're going to get two hundred miles, maybe. Yeah, it's gonna be eighty kilowatt hour, hundred kilowatt hour. Is so what's gonna be, and then how how much range you get out of that? Probably towing. It's gonna be awful uh, range. range. I mean, yeah. awful awful range with a hundred eighty to a hundred kilowatt hour batch pack. So unless there's been a massive, unless the unveiling comes with a massive decrease in in cost of battery cells, um, I, I'm having difficulties. Imagining the different variance option with the different pricing option if the first one start at fifty at less than fifty thousand uh, dollars, so so that that's very surprising to me. All right, I'm just cycling through some more questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just talked about the price. Uh, the six foot is popular, I guess, but not that popular. Um, so this is another question about scale. Um, it's going to be a lower volume option that could really ramp up on configurable options. I think it's going to be a high volume option uh, or a high volume vehicle. Yeah, yeah. If it started at 50,000, it has to be a high volume option. Right. There's just no way around it. They don't going to make a Bollinger $100,000 truck. Yeah. Right. Although they could make a high end version theoretically uh, with, mm -hmm. with big battery packs up to 200 kilowatt, like the road booster, yeah. but who knows? Uh, mileage range that's going to really depend on the battery and the aerodynamics and yeah at, the at 50 if they can because he started he talked about 300 400 miles range option uh at fifty thousand dollars if i don't think that's going to be that might be the higher hand version not the lower version much like uh rivian with their uh 135 kilowatt hour to 185 kilowatt hour option that that, that those are different it'll be nice uh that Tesla will finally be able to have its own service fleet instead of driving around Fords. Yeah, uh, that's cra true. crazy. John uh, notes that, um, you know, it's the company's identity. Uh, I'm sure this will go into service uh, shortly after launch, as soon as they kind of get their first. Uh, uh, I mean, Tesla has already built. been doing that with the Model S and X that they reconfigured the back to have like all the tools inside right. and everything, but they still also use uh, gasoline powered vans and stuff. So, uh, I'm not sure what's the split, the mix is on, on those. Uh, I mean, they, they, they did acknowledge what you just said, that there was the whole identity and they felt bad about using gasoline-powered vans and everything, and that's why they developed the Model S and X. But uh, we we, uh, we see those just as often. We see the, the vans, even though they have recently, after that announcement, they have expanded the fleet a lot. So I'm not sure what the deal is on that front. Yeah. Um, so, Frank. I mean, with the triangle or with the Blade exactly. Runner, 
Like, yeah. does that get rid of the trunk? I mean, how is that going to also affect, uh, you know, with the trunk frunk being gone? How is that going to affect safety? Yeah. Good. Oh, good question on that too. So yeah, if Tesla would have went with the traditional pickup truck design, just electric, yeah, you could now imagine a giant, giant trunk where you have a ton of uh, storage space there, and then the bed can be just used as a, a regular bed um, for a more um, a workload, uh, work intensive like carrying lumber and whatnot in the front you, you can just do it for your regular luggage if you need to whatever but yeah the the, the question is now based on the teaser image we have that if this is the front end if this as an angle like we think it, it has uh it changes the whole thing about the front now it can also be flat based on the teaser image it can also be flat if it is flat then trunk is still an option so yeah really hard to tell but like you said uh, the safety question is good too like uh, um i'm sure th that's always tesla's priority so i'm sure they, they figured it out if uh if that's the case but uh yeah it the, the whole uh larger crumple space in front is a is a big question uh towing long distances i'm gonna go with probably not fantastic uh obviously you know if superchargers are nearby that helps um tesla's already started building superchargers that uh <laughs> Uh, you know, if you're towing something, um, yeah, maybe maybe the mega charger comes in there. I don't know, probably not. Um, different application. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be nowhere near the energy capacity of the Tesla Semi. So, not sure if the mega charger would have that big of an impact on the charge time. Uh, though, like you said, the towing capacity. The, 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 if you're coming in with uh, something in tow. It's harder to park at those uh, superchargers, so maybe then then the, the mega charger would be a, an option for that. Yeah. So apparently, Kimball has tweeted Elon's brother, who's also on the Tesla board. Uh, he's most excited for the Cybertruck than any Tesla product since the Model S. It's going to blow your mind uh, with the emoji of brain exploding, electric, and then cowboy it, hat. It's Kimball. Yeah. Still not Kimball. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but thanks, I. Uh, yeah. I mean, Elon said the exact same thing on those. So uh, right. Um, although Kim, Kim Ball it. seems like a uh, more of a cowboy kind of guy, so maybe that's his. Uh, yeah. You know. uh, maybe we won't yeah, have a front. He lives in Colorado, so it's the, right. the land of the F one fifty. So might uh, might yeah. might try to convince some of his neighbors to go, to go electric. Right. Uh, so they don't need a giant engine. No front cyberpunk design might just mean modern version of a cab forward design to maximize bed size. Sure. But th that's been the big rumor with uh, like Tesla's misdirection about the the picture that he unveiled at the at the Tesla Semi unveiling of the pickup ver variant of the Tesla Semi. Like that, this could actually be the the design. Like you're closer to it. Th that'd be crazy surprising to me. But uh, yeah, that would be a, that would be a huge frunk in that case. So it would be yeah. like almost like part of the storage, like a second. Uh, yeah, because the, the, the Tesla Semi has a frunk. Uh, right. I think we, we posted it before, but uh, so the Bollinger has 7,500 pounds of towing. Oh, it's gonna be that, that, I think. Yeah, um, okay, so so people are already switching their model Ys for cyber trucks. Uh, that's good, I guess. It maybe not switching their model Y <laughs> reservation for, yeah, for a not, I mean, and, and we haven't even seen it yet, but yeah, Kimball can't be yeah, all right. Anyway, I uh, think we'll be able to place order day one. You will always, you can probably place an order right now if you really want to. <laughs> uh, Tesla will take your money. Yeah. Uh, battery costs could come down quite a bit uh, with the Maxwell Tech and other stuff. It yeah, yeah. really will. Yeah, by the time the, the, the Tesla truck is, is unveiled, the, the battery cost is, is going to come down, and I'm sure Tesla will take that into account in the pricing that they're going to uh, unveil later this month. Uh, however, it, if it's that big of a difference, I, I thought like because we know that the Tesla battery and powertrain investor day is coming next year, and I think that's gonna give us a better uh, insight into the um, uh, timeline for Tesla's battery cost and and volume production, because those those trucks are gonna uh, are gonna consume a lot of battery cells from for Tesla because already Tesla has the highest energy capacity battery packs per car. On average, and now you, you you're gonna increase that a lot with um, a Tesla pickup truck that's gonna have, I mean, I, no less than 80 kilowatt hour in my opinion, and I even think that that's kind of low. 
uh, and it's likely going to have like a 200 kilowatt hour option in it. So uh, that that's going to be a big battery consumer. So I, I thought that Tesla would sort of give us like better plans, better look inside into what's that going to look like before only the truck, but it doesn't look like it. All right, so we should probably wrap up here pretty quick. We're already uh, 15 minutes more than we thought, but um, like final thoughts, uh, you know, is this going to be a big, I mean, it sounds like a big deal for Tesla. Uh, what do you think? Like, is this kind of like what I didn't even look at the stock price, but is it juice in the stock? What's going on? Oh, I didn't, I didn't look either. Uh, we're not good shareholders, you and I, I think. <laughs> uh, oh, it's up. It's up. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a killer event, personally. I think uh, even though at first he, try, he sort of tried to manage expectation about the design and everything, and then I think he switched like 180 and was like, nah, it's going to be the best thing ever. <laughs> and right. uh, and I, I rarely... I, I always think that this is design team... Uh, I think it's one of the best in the industry right now. I think they get almost everything right if not everything like i have very little complaint about tesla's designs in general so even though they are quite evidently taking a bigger risk here uh, i i think i think it's going to be a, a great a great vehicle and uh i don't think they're going to need that backup design of a, a more traditional pickup truck i'm just uh i'm just curious like i said my biggest my biggest question right now it's going to be the, the variance option based on the capacity and range versus the prices uh, option. And uh, I, I would love, I would love if Tesla do it as transpa transparently as they did with the Model Y where they already released their configurator. And um, with the configurator, the, uh, the, you see all the option right away. I think that's the best way to do it because it's a more transparent one, even though they ended up changing the prices of the Model Y a bunch of times since because the, the, it follows the, the prices on the Model 3 and the Model 3 change prices. So, so yeah, um, the, I think it's going to be a great event. Yeah, me too, and I'm really excited. So with that, we'll kind of end uh, today's, but we'll be back on in uh, two days on Friday. Uh, so we'll have more then. All See right. Thanks for listening. See you soon, guys.